One of the best kept secrets in military history is unveiled by President Johnson at his first general news conference since taking office just 100 days ago. His startling announcement is that after five years, the U.S. has developed a jet high-altitude interceptor capable of flying long distances at 2,000 miles an hour, three times the speed of sound. The United States has successfully developed an advanced experimental jet aircraft, the A-11, which has been tested in sustained flight at more than 2,000 miles an hour and at altitudes in excess of 70,000 feet. The performance of the A-11 far exceeds that of any other aircraft in the world today. The development of this aircraft has been made possible by major advances in aircraft technology of great significance for both military and commercial applications. Several A-11 aircraft are now being flight tested at Edwards Air Force Base in California. The development of a supersonic commercial transport aircraft will also be greatly assisted by the lessons learned from this A-11 program. For example, one of the most important technical achievements this project has been the mastery of the metallurgy and fabrication of titanium metal, which is required for the high temperatures experienced by aircraft traveling at more than three times the speed of sound. Arrangements are being made to make this and other important technical developments available under appropriate safeguards to those directly engaged in the supersonic transport program. What's up guys, Hangar 99 Files here, and today I will be presenting you with the first episode of my new series called The Aircraft Files. The aircraft I have chosen to be the first in this series is the Lockheed A-12, as it is one of my personal favourites, so without further ado, let's get right into it. Firstly, let's just talk about some general information about the A-12. It was designed and built in the famous Lockheed Skunk Works. First flight, 26th of April 1962. It was produced from 1962 to 1964 and was in operation between 1963 and 1968. It was given the name Cygnus by one of its pilots in the tradition of Lockheed naming its aircraft after celestial bodies, and this was continually used by its crews. It has a claimed top speed of Mach 3.2 although many believe it to be greater than this as it was slightly shorter and weighed much less in comparison to the SR-71, which claims a higher top speed. Its surface ceiling was a claimed 95,000 feet, which is greater than that of the record holder, the SR-71 Blackbird. Again, it is rumoured that due to the secrecy of the A-12, the CIA didn't want its name gracing the top of the record books for all the public to see. 
it had a crew of one, which made the job of piloting it even more exhausting, which brought about the idea of her two-seat variant, the YF-12. It had a claimed rate of climb of 11,800 feet per minute. It was propelled through the air by two of the legendary J-58 afterburning turbojets by Pratt and Whitney, each putting out a colossal 32,500 pounds force of thrust. It had a loaded weight of 124,600 pounds, which is roughly 56,500 kilograms. Fifteen A-12s were built, with two of them being M-21 drone launchers. Over the years, six A-12 were lost, one of which was a M-21 drone launcher variant, sadly claiming the lives of two pilots and an engineer. The programme was ended on the 28th of December 1966. It flew its last mission on the 8th of May 1968, over North Korea. Its final flight being made on the 21st of June 1968, to Palmdale, California Storage Facility. They were in storage until 2007, which is when they began to be shipped to various museums across the US. Now it's time to get into some of the interesting facts about the A-12. It was brought about after the failure of the CIA's Project Rainbow, which was their attempt at reducing the radar cross-section of the U-2. Due to little thermal insulation, the cockpit would be like a moderately hot oven at times. The A-12's design has led to the M-21 launcher variant, the YF-12 and the SR-71 Blackbird. A-12 is the name given to the aircraft, with the A standing for Archangel and the 12 meaning it's the 12th iteration of the design. Archangel was chosen as it follows on from Angel, which was the name given to the U-2 design. The A-12 competed against the Convair Kingfish in the CIA's Oxcar program and won. Even though the Kingfish had a smaller radar cross-section, the A-12 came out victorious with its slightly better performance, lower cost and Lockheed's reliable reputation. They were flown and tested at the infamous Groom Lake Nevada testing site, Area 51. Up next is my rating of this aircraft. For aesthetics, I wish I could give it a thousand, although this scale only goes up to ten. With the chines making it look very sleek, its sharp edges, its inward angled tail fins, and the sheer size of its engines relative to the rest of the aircraft, I'm going to have to give it a ten for aesthetics. For performance, with its Mach 3.2 or higher top speed and its 95,000 feet service ceiling, I'm going to have to give it a ten again. In terms of being fit for purpose, it was set out to replace the U-2 and take over its role as the CIA's lead reconnaissance aircraft, and it did this even better than they had hoped for, without a single A-12 ever being shot down. Although piloting it was exhausting and it had a tendency to get very warm in the cockpit, therefore I'm going to give it a 9 in this section. This brings our average rating for the Lockheed A-12 to 9.67, which it truly deserves. It also brings a great start to the series and sets a very hard score to beat. Now getting on to my personal opinion. I personally love this aircraft. The way it looks, its mind-blowing performance figures, its secrecy and how it outperformed everything in its day. Sadly though, it doesn't get much time in the spotlight as most people only know of its successor, the SR-71 Blackbird. So hopefully as I make this video, it gains some more well-deserved recognition. Well there it is ladies and gentlemen. I give to you the Lockheed A-12. One of the greatest aircraft to have ever left the surface of this planet. Don't forget to subscribe, like and comment as it really helps me out a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.